this is a heavy, heavy story. And I think that the, it's it's terrifying in a way that this was just happening in a, you know mainstream American city right there in Philly. This was just taking place, and it was accepted. This clinic apparently had won awards. They had been commended, and this guy, this monster, had been there exploiting women and murdering children this entire time. When you when you look at this movie, what are you what are you looking to do? What are you looking? How are you looking to shape this movie? How are you looking to bring this story out on the screen? Well, I mean, to me, the most there are three basically the most important things about the the story is what happened, why it was allowed to happen, and why nobody wanted to talk about it after they found out that it happened. Right. So that's that's basically what my interest is in bringing it to the screen. And also, I, you know, I think Hollywood over the years has made a tremendous number of mistakes in like trying to tell the audience what to think about a given film rather than just showing them something and letting them make up their own minds about it. And I think with a story like this, that is that is really the most compelling uh, way to present the story. Uh, I want to be as truthful as possible. I want to tell what happened and, uh, you know, let let the audience decide based on, on what uh, the actions of Kermit Gosnell were. How graphic do you think that this will be? Because the story itself is pretty graphic. Well, you know, it's a, it's a very fine line that we're going to have to walk because we're going to have to tell the truth, but you also don't want, uh, you know, your audience turning the movie off in the first mm -hmm. 15 minutes going, right. I, can't, I can't sit through this. You know, so it's, it, it's, it's definitely challenging material in that way, but, uh, you know, we're, we are we're definitely all sensitive to that. Um, I don't see this as a horror movie. I don't see this right. as a... Uh, no. A, uh, exploitation film or a, a gore movie. I, you know, I see this as a very serious story, and what he did needs to be told in a way, obviously, that can be stomached, but it still needs right. to be told. And Andrew Clavin is uh, has written the script for this. Who is uh, he's just such a phenomenal writer. Um, you, you. I mean, this is. I don't think that a that a, a story like this could be told with a better team of people assembled for it Nick tell me about just this this group that that is bringing the story to life because this is this is like the varsity a list like if you had a fantasy movie draft and you were picking people to be in certain places I mean this is I think what people would pick well that's terrific thanks so much for saying that it's it, I mean it, Ann and Phelan are, are and Magda Segata uh, mm -hmm. they're all just fearless uh, tireless workers their energy is uh, Nonstop, and they have done a great job of, of bringing in Andrew, who's delivered a terrific script, and uh, and now I'm here, and, and we're going to try to turn this into a, a shooting script over the next few months and uh, go at it. And I'm just, it's such an honor, and a, I feel a great responsibility, you right. know, that I've been chosen to do this. And, you know, today when the announcement came, there's been a real outpouring of support and people sending best wishes and prayers on Twitter and stuff. And it really, it's, it's been quite humbling and I am very moved by it all and proud to be here. And, and I know that Ann and Phelan and I know Andrew and you as well have been very careful in saying, no, this isn't, this isn't some sort of um, like politically messaged film. This isn't because so, you don't you don't have to embellish the story. You don't have to preach at people through this this content matter because, I mean, you have enough there. It does it for itself. Speak to that a little bit, um, if you will, because there are a lot of times people think that you know a, a movie like this. Well, it has to have this message, but the message is already kind of a part of the story. I mean, it's so horrific. There's not anything that you could add to it. Well, I don't think you're ever very persuasive in, in any sort of a, an argument where you just say, this is what I think and this is what you should think too. Right. Uh, you know, and, and that's why I don't engage in any attempts at persuasion on Twitter. I just sort of smack people around. <laughs> <laughs> Which we love if you follow Nick. Yes, Nick Searcy on Twitter. <laughs> yeah. But I, I think, especially with this story, you know, I think the, the best thing that you can do is lay it out there as truthfully as you can. And at the end of the day, you know, you're, let that make its own argument. And, you know, you, you, you want to be able to say at the end of the day, after you make this movie, we didn't make anything up. Right. This is what happened. We didn't have to, we didn't have to shape anything. We didn't have to distort anything to, to get the point across.